It's Thursday, May 14th, 2015. I'm Rim. I am Scott. And this is Geek Nights. The fuck are we talking about tonight? Let's do this. So, uh, biking home today, I was going to have a bunch of anecdotes about how, for whatever reason, today must have been, like, shithead biker day. Like, I bumped into more people on bicycles. Yesterday was Bike to Work Day, that Wednesday, that, and I think it's Bike to Work Month oh, also. Oh, because yesterday a whole bunch of shitheads had set up these tents, like, blocking the bike lane, giving away free shit. That's, and yeah, it that's, really got in my way. That's transportation alternatives doing their thing. Guys. They do that every year. You haven't noticed? You know what? You I know think what? they do it multiple times yeah, a year. Yeah, you know what I probably noticed it as? Some shitheads are blocking the bike. They've lane. actually upgraded. Usually, I just pass it by and ignore them. Uh, but they upgraded, and they instead of just having coffee that I don't drink, they had coffee and snacks. So I actually oh. slowed down for a second to peep the snack, and then saw it was a crappy snack and kept going. But they had like the, the crowds they formed were blocking multiple bike lanes that I used to go to work. So guys, think this through a little bit better. But also today, I run into it's like. I've never seen so many adults who clearly do not know how bicycles work attempting to ride them in New York, and they're almost all on city bikes. Mm -hmm. So uh, Scott just informed me right before we did the show that apparently today was like, you can ride city bike for free day. It was actually very interesting. The reason you could ride city bike for free today was because some Swiss company or whatever sponsored it. Like They basically said, we'll pick up the tab for everyone getting a free city bike as a means of advertising themselves. And I think that's actually cool as a revenue stream for a city bike. Yeah. Uh, but, act, you know, it's like... If it's like the Empire State Building where every day is sponsored by... Well, I guess sort of. But think about it this way, right? Let's say on a today they would have had 100 people buy day passes, right? Okay, that costs X dollars. That's how much revenue they bring in. If day passes are free... Because this company is paying for them. A lot more people are going to get day passes. I'll just go get but, bikes and take them to other stations. Right, just to ride bikes around. But meanwhile, they're still getting paid probably pretty close. You know, I can't imagine they would make a deal with too much of a discount, right? You know, that company is, is paying for all these day passes. So they're not actually giving away for free. They're just increasing sales. Yep. It's interesting, though, because I had no idea that this was going on. All like, I knew was... Shitheads on city bikes who don't know how to ride bikes were wobbling around all over the place, yeah. going the wrong way in the middle of the street. I'm sure business people already knew this, but that like that's a great business idea I never heard of before. Where it's like, let's say I sell apples in my fruit store, and yeah. it's like, you know, apples ten cents. I'm gonna sell X apples <laughs> if it's free apples, but I'm getting the ten cents from Rim, who said I'll pay for everyone's apples today. I'm gonna sell out of apples, yeah, but me and make way more money. Me paying for all those apples is way cheaper than me buying like an ad. Well, because what you're doing is you're buying people liking Rim, and I'm, yeah. I'm the one profiting from that with my store, and, and everyone I else is profiting with the apples. It's pretty much like just good all around. We're onto something here today. Yeah, so we just need to uh, find. So here's the next thing: if you want to advertise on the internet. The way to do it is find a popular website that otherwise has ads and instead buy the site's ads and put no ads up except a tiny banner that says no ads because of us. Well, I think a better way to do it would be saying, this game on Steam is free today. I'm paying for every copy. Anyone who downloads this game today on Steam, it's free. Or Humble One Bundle. One day only. The yeah. fabulous anyone who Blues buys Brothers. A, anyone who gets really a Humble Bundle Review. today pays $0. And it's you get the whole bundle, the max bundle, and yep. I will pay the max bundle price for every person that downloads. Not the worst idea. Yep. So you're promoting those games because they're getting exposure. People play them who wouldn't have. I'm getting exposure because my name's on it. People are getting free games. I'm, and the people who make the games are getting money, and I'm just spending money. But I'm getting the exposure that I was paying just for in the first place. Don't do it with City Bike because those people were in my way. <laughs> All day. It was awful. I didn't bike to work today only because I went to El Dentist. I've biked to work like 12 times this year so far. The dentist said I was looking great. No problems. My teeth are awesome. Not bad. I bite you. I don't really want you to bite me. But they're so clean right now. It's the best time for me to bite you. No, but then you'll get them dirty right away. Are you filthy? I just biked here. You're going to get a <laughs> bunch of New York all over your teeth. Yeah. So, I, I in the news... Give me a brush. Uh, as I pointed out on Twitter, 
because we chose not to pay for upgraded infrastructure with money, we're now paying for our lack of upgrades with literal human lives because one of the biggest train disasters like in recent history happened and an Amtrak train basically like crashed and killed a ton of people. Yep. I think they found the eighth dead person so far. They're not sure how many people are dead. How is it so hard to find people? Aren't they just all in Did the train? Did you see pictures un- of the train? Yeah, but aren't they just near next to the train or under it or in no? It? They're like crushed inside of that. Like, how are you gonna? They gotta cut this thing apart and get inside it. Look at that. Yeah, that took this many days. Yeah. All right. Shit's not easy. Okay. So, basically, this should be a wake up call, but the reality is already one, it's a partisan issue, and two. <laughs> Almost no one actually cares. The Republicans, funnily enough, they had basically, like along with the Democrats, sort of passed this thing a while ago that said Amtrak has to put in this fancy system that will prevent accidents exactly like this one. But they didn't give Amtrak any money to do that. And simultaneously, they had been cutting Amtrak's budget constantly. Isn't there some train making company that can, like, that wants to lobby the government and? So I don't think there's a lot of money in the train making enough to be worth lobbying. Trains are worth, they're so expensive. You got to imagine a train business could profit heavily if they convinced the United States to spend tax dollars on trains. The thing is, there's I so think, much space here. I think the cost of convincing the United States is so high that you could never make a profit. What if I already have so much money because uh, I'm Google and then I buy a train company and then lobby? That could happen. You know what we need? We need a Rockefeller to come and say, look, fuckers, and just do it with money. <laughs> but that's not going to happen. Why can't like Bill Gates and Sergey Brin and uh, Musk all get together? Because they're car people. You know how many cars Bill Gates has? Yeah, but how many of them does he drive? <laughs> no. Oh. Oh, he's always driving one <laughs> Porsche or whatever. So the funniest thing about this and also the saddest thing, so basically... The Republicans, like, sense danger immediately. So they were like, no, don't make this an infrastructure issue. Don't bring up the fact that we cut Amtrak's budget literally yesterday. Because no amount of infrastructure upgrades could have prevented this. This is clearly human error. That train was going too fast. The speed is literally the only thing that matters. Yes, but neglecting to fail to, to mention the fact the train was going, oh my God, 100-something miles an hour, right? Don't bring up the fact that trains in other countries go two, 300 miles an hour, yeah. perfectly fine with no issues, and no one would complain about that. Or yeah. never mind the fact that it just so happens that that thing that... The government said Amtrak has to deploy, but also gave them no money to deploy and then cut their budget even further. It would cost as much as no. just getting better trains? It wouldn't have cost that much at all. In fact, it's pretty cheap. Amtrak had deployed it in as many places as they could possibly afford with their pitiful budget. Mm. But they couldn't deploy it everywhere because they, you know, Congress and mostly the Republicans won't give them any money. That thing, a bunch of engineers came out and said, would literally 100% have prevented this issue. No. Oh. Like, it is designed to prevent this issue. Okay. So and it, it wasn't even that expensive. It's just like Amtrak has no money. They've if they would have given this. him money, it would have been deployed and these people wouldn't have died. Yes. So the Republicans basically caused these people's deaths. Okay. Because there it's a partisan issue whether or not to fund Amtrak. Also, for people who don't live in America, uh you should probably realize that Amtrak is like our big train network. The only profitable part of it is the area around New York. Mm-hmm. And literally no other part of it matters and operates at a huge loss. But you can ride this train everywhere. It goes all the way to Seattle, to Chicago, to L.A. You can ride this train across the whole goddamn country. You can pay and attach your own train cars to these trains. You can get little cabins in these trains. You can take the, I don't know if you can still do it. There used to be, we took it once, the auto train. You would drive to Virginia. You would put your car on the train in some in, in the back you would go sit in the front where there's all the dining car and all that kind of stuff. And the train would take you basically overnight to Florida. And then you would get off and then they'd bring your car around and you'd get in it and you'd be in Florida and you just didn't have to drive. You just, yeah. And you didn't have to rent a car. You didn't have to fly. And it took basically overnight. You sleep on the train once. You, know, you get there in the morning, get on the train, spend all day on the train, go to bed, wake up get off the train sometime during the next day. Well, that second Anime Central that I went to, I drove to Rochester from Beacon, well, from uh, Fishkill, and then I got on an Amtrak with, like, Skojo and some friends, then I took the Amtrak to Chicago from there. Right, and that's the thing, is all these fancy trains in other countries, much like the internet in other countries, it doesn't have to go very far. But also, (laughs) it's subsidized by the government 
and there's a lot of investment in that infrastructure. In the U.S., Congress gives Amtrak basically no money, and they force them to run very, very unprofitable routes that a handful of people use. Well, if you turn those routes off, what those few people, what the fuck are they going to do? You know what? A bus. <laughs> Replace all the Amtrak in those dumpy little towns with a bus that goes to a bigger Amtrak station somewhere. Mm-hmm. I think that's what we should do. Or if they if Amtrak has this mandate to cover the, the whole bus country, is so safe. They yeah. I'm not saying Amtrak's that unsafe <laughs> yet. I'm just saying that they should either fund it enough to cover that mandate or drop the mandate. Well, like I knew some people who wanted to go to Minnesota for the Netrunner World Championship, which I would never go to in Minnesota. I would fly and rent a car. Obviously, that's what I would do too. But they were the kind of people who were afraid of flying. So what? They t- so they took Amtrak. Don't go to Minnesota. There's no way to get there. They took Amtrak to Minnesota, Ugh. and they made it. And uh, and they How played. How long did that take? I don't know. They played Netrunner on the whole on the train the whole way there. <laughs> and I'm just like, all right. But if they didn't have Amtrak, they would have had to deal with their fear of flying or drive, which would have been way worse, or bus, which would have been way worse. Yep. Yeah, buses are pretty. But pretty Amtrak awful. totally lost money bringing them there. Yep. So, How many people were on that train? I can't imagine a lot. And meanwhile, America has this like weird obsession with making mass transit has like they treat it like a business, like it has to be profitable. It has to make profits. It has to like self fund. But roads don't have to self fund. Nope. Roads get funded by the government. Yep. And somehow they, they don't see how utterly fucked up that is. Well, because I think it's a matter of not understanding the cause and effect, right? It's like, people drive, therefore we need to fund roads. And it's like, actually, people are driving because you fund roads. If you funded trains and stopped funding roads, people would stop driving, but, yep. and they would take the train more. Or like Midwestern people, like, oh, buses are for poor people. It's like, yeah, that's because buses are cheap and they suck. <laughs> That's why you would get if, this impression that only poor paid, people ride If them. you paid money to make fancy buses, p- poor people would stop using them and rich people would use them. Yep, look at Google right. with their private buses. And Whatever you spend the money on, you're basically, it's not give money to what people use. It's give money and people will use the thing you give money to. Or maybe, just maybe. You tell the people where to go. They don't tell you where. Just what. maybe. Connecting all the wide spaces in America with trains is stupid. And maybe we should just use bullet trains to connect all the major cities on the two coasts. I mean, flying to Boston is a ridiculous waste. Yeah. Because a bullet train would literally get you there faster than flying. And in fact, if you account for the TSA security bullshit and getting to and from the airport, it's actually faster to take our existing shitty Amtrak Sella to Boston than it is to fly there. You don't think they would put the TSA security on the fancy bullet train? They haven't so far. And on the fancy bullet train, though. Yeah, at the same time, they also shouldn't... They would be like, this is a target for terrorism. We spent so much money on this. It's so fancy. I'm going to put it this way. If America was smart enough to make a bullet train, by that point, they were already smart enough to get rid of the TSA. All right. There is no, there is no world I can envision where a bullet train happens and TSA still exists in the same political climate. <laughs> so, something good that is being built my news uh-huh. the most important thing the most important news of the entire week month year oh i know what you're talking about in brooklyn new york a place that we don't live it's actually slightly far away well we live i live on the border of brooklyn sure whatever uh they're going in Brooklyn. they're going to build a wegman ah uh, yes the Mother most important thing wegmans the real deal the greatest guys I don't think you understand. to exist other than Stu Leonard's. So you listeners, like you, you've known us long enough to know. I mean, a lot of you people probably live in suburbs and just have big supermarkets. Yeah. A lot of you people maybe live in cities and know what the deal is. Maybe you live in other countries where groceries are totally different than they are here. Yeah, like even here, like in New York, like I get fresh direct. Mm-hmm. You know what? I like fresh direct right. a lot. Like I don't go grocery yeah, stores. Yeah, maybe you get shit delivered. I don't know. Maybe you just eat out. Maybe you have eat from your own farm. I don't fucking know. But, but I, I can put this really succinctly. Wegman is, other than Stu Leonard's, the grocery store of grocery stores. You know us. We are jaded as shit about everything. When we leave New York City to go to a convention, it's nothing but Scott bitching about everything's not as good as New York. Nothing impresses us. We Every time we go to, we're like, wow, there's nothing to do here. And we ate at all the restaurants. Ah. We did a whole episode reviewing the city of San Antonio, one of the biggest cities in America, and how boring and tiny it is. And yet, when we are near a Wegmans, like we travel somewhere, we'll go to it like we're going to an amusement park. They're we usually, go- <laughs> most of the Wegmans are so big, 
and they have every food imaginable, and the food quality is so high, and the price is average. Yeah. But they're like, oh, it consists, not only that, but not even for the customer, how amazing it is, a place it is, for the employees, it's always like number one place to work, Wegman. Yeah, they're super ethical, they pay their employees like real living wages, like everything about this place is great. And they're going to finally build one in New York City. Now, there's a real important question. A real important How much question. does it cost to rent an apartment near where this place is going to be? About as much as it costs to rent right here because well, while it, it's time to move then. I got to be within walking distance. It's in like that green pointy, like that sort of like. Got to be in walking distance. Rising area. So it's in a hot area, but it's in a hot area that's furthest away from the hottest areas. And it has basically no subway access. Uh, how do I get to work? You could walk to the G and then take that to uh, further Brooklyn. Uh, you could walk all the way is to there like a water taxi there. Uh, I'll bet there will be. Uh, I could take the water taxi over the East River in the winter. Yeah. And then take a cross town something. Well, in the summer, I would just bike over the Williamsburg obviously, Bridge. Obviously, obviously. I'm talking about the Well, no, if you winter. were living down there, you would want to bike up through Brooklyn and bike over the Queensboro Bridge. Sure. Anyway, so there's a big question that we didn't think about because there's one, there's one thing left. It's only going to be 25% smaller than a regular Wegman. So only 75% the size, I'll take it. There is one thing left now that New York City lacks other than Debellas? a roller coaster park. Yeah, Debella's. But Wegmans has sort of a Debella's in so it. So that's what I'm getting at. Will the deli counter at this Wegmans have the 90% as good as Debella's subs? I can't see why it wouldn't. If it does, I don't know what I'm going to do other than Bike eat there. down there and get like, a sandwich. Stop there every day on my way home. Bike over, grab a sandwich, go Bike to the Bike over park, there for lunch from eat, my office. Eat the sandwich, go back home with the, sa- with the backup sandwich. We have detoured dozens of miles out of our way to go to Debella's on trips to other places. Why wouldn't you? Uh, if you're stupid, <laughs> if you're gluten intolerant, <laughs> there's that. I should buy a bodega around here. And, like, just, bo- and just copy the Wegmans formula? No, and make it a Wawa. Oh, yeah. Yep, see, we, while we lack Wawa, I think we make up for that with our combination of bodegas and street food. But imagine if one of the bodegas was just a Wawa. Oh. It had a Wawa brand on the outside. You know what I just imagined? If that weird gas station right next to our apartment, like the, the studio right here. Yeah, that's a good example. If that was a Wawa. Right, there's no reason it can't be. I would, oh. Why couldn't it be? There's no reason it shouldn't be. Right. That place was made bank, too. Uh, once those new buildings open up. No, even though that place, all the good restaurants are at least several blocks away. That is the place. You know what it would do? It would kill the deli downstairs in my building. Maybe. So, tiny news. I, wasn't, I wouldn't have talked about this. I wouldn't have even, like, wouldn't even be on our radar. Like, Scott, most people I know saw, like, oh, they're kind of like how when the government monitors terrorists, they're like, oh, there's chatter. We don't know what they're talking about, but there's increased chatter. They're yeah, I saw about. a whole bunch of news on all my feeds talking about gem and the holograms and i said oh there must be some new gem and the holograms thing that people are excited about okay i don't really care about gem and the holograms i've seen yep. maybe like two episodes and i don't care so i will ignore this now one that's how we stay abreast of stuff on the internet by paint like we know if something's trending even if we don't know why or care you at least look we had the pulse I'm, tap- like, I'm tapped into the feeds yeah something's I going what, on with i the know gem. what's going on i know what i need to know so i was in the same boat but then I saw a tweet from Ben Kachara, and he felt the need to have an article on Polygon about this trailer. Okay. So I was like, all right, that's worth I mean, clicking on. I guess if something's trending, you're going to write an article about it to try to get some hits, right? Why wouldn't so I clicked you? on it, and the story was kind of fascinating, so I watched the trailer. And the first notable thing was that when I watched the trailer, it had like 60 likes and like 2,000 dislikes. Well, that tells you something. And so, by the way, so they're making a, not only they're making Gem and the Holograms, right? It's a live action Hollywood movie, Gem and the Holograms. Uh, so it is a live action Hollywood movie that is called Gem and the Holograms. And they are all named after characters in Gem and the Holograms. There appears to be no magic, no technology, no supercomputer. I don't think there's even any misfits. And it's basically, remember that movie with Tom Hanks and younger actor who looks like Tom Hanks? No. Uh, no. Okay, anyway. Uh, this is basically a tween version of that thing you do about a fake like YouTube celebrity band becoming famous. All right. 
I am amazed. And the, the cool thing is, the entire internet realizes how bad this is going to be. <laughs> so what do you do as a studio? If you like, you're, like, you're making your movie and you release like your big trailer, your big deal, and it gets like across the board, universally panned, even by the people you're trying to target. You put it out and make your money anyway because even Garfield movies made money? But Garfield movies, parents will take their kids to see that no matter what. You think they won't go see this? I don't know. I don't know There if are they people will. who like this kind of movie, right? Without let's say you took the same movie and didn't call it Gem and the Holograms, called it something else. I'm sure I guess all the I'm people... sure there's already thirty movies just like that. But those people, they will see and like this movie as well. They don't care that it's Gem and the Holograms or not. And at least some Gem and the Holograms fans will also go see it. You know who will go see it? The people who liked Who don't Pitch know better perfect. I don't know what that is. It's is that a movie basically the same kind about of movie? An acapella group. All right, it made like a hundred million. That's money. I'll That's take money. it. I'll take it. All right, you can give that to me. So, th- then the question is: Will this movie actually have enough bad momentum to fail, or is it getting all this like really bad publicity because everyone outside of this very niche anyone who's specific well, it's the bad publicity is only it. the only bad publicity is getting is the internet bad publicity because those people who know what the fuck Gem and the Holograms is, other people don't know. That's what I'm saying. So, this will be Gem and the Holograms to them. They don't know about the robot and anything. Yeah. So it's interesting that it's sort of, it's being hated primarily because people who weren't supposed to see it noticed it. I mean, did you see the video of the kid today at the payphone who didn't know what the fuck it was? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right? That kid doesn't know what Gem and the Holograms is. Maybe he likes this. I don't know. I if get this the is impression. first exposure. I, I'm people confident. People will see this and not even know that it was based on something. I'm confident this is aimed at 10 to 11 and a half year old girls. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, if you didn't know, there's a Gem and the Holograms comic. There's a lot of comics now that it's are based. legit. There are a lot of comics out now that are based on, you know, properties. And unlike uh, other mediums, when they just base, you know, new material on old pro- licensed properties, many, not all, but many of the comics uh, based on properties are good. Adventure Time comic is good. Brave Azura's comic is good. You know, there's a lot of good comics based on the stuff that you like anyway. So if you like Gem and the Holograms, it's a comic book. You can go check that out. It has, you know, all the magic and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like this movie. I mean, really, Gem and the Hologram should have been remade a lot like that Equestria Girls thing. Like, that kind of media was how you remake that. Oh, yeah, because that's so great. You know, it, it, it's not for us. <laughs> it's not. But it's, that is the way you do it, because it's basically, like, it's music-driven, it's a cartoon, it's got all that kind of fantasy stuff that, like, made Gem what it was. Whatever. This thing is literally, watch the trailer, just so you, because you're, you're thinking, like, how bad could it be? It's pretty bad. And ignore it after that, and don't, don't worry about anything else anyone says about it. There's literally no reason to pay further attention. But anyway, things of the day. Our friend Judith showed me this. It's kind of an amazing video. Needs a little bit of uh, discussion. So this is a video from kind of like public access TV. Like, I don't know what network it was. I'm trying to figure this shit out. But basically, kind of like how PBS and like other networks would do like telethons or fundraisers or auctions right, or right. things. Right, so, right. So public television, people who are in the, only in the United States might know this who are old like us who watch public television when it, you know. So we have a ch- channel, it's PBS, and it's public television. So the government pays for it, but the government doesn't pay for it enough. So it, it won't survive with just the government's money alone, but it also doesn't do commercials and the programs it puts on are usually things like Sesame Street and whatnot that, you know, don't, you know, other educational highbrow content that's not really going to rake in tons of viewers and tons of, you know, money from sponsors and whatnot. So the money comes from these donation drives where basically they'll go on and they'll have programs. But in between the programs, they'll stop and talk to people and be like, if you call us on the phone and give us money, we will send you this tote bag 
and this cookbook and this other. It's like, yep. please send us money. And when enough, I was a kid, there was people, a big one that was auctions. Like they'd auction stuff off that people had donated. Yeah, and we and would watch it religiously every year. No, because they would put on really good stuff during this thing. Like, yeah, like, my mom. There's did. a lot of there were a lot of cooking programs on there, and this is before the Food Network existed. So like. You would go see like Jacques Pepin cook something, and like he would do the best cookings. Oh no, I'm talking about the auction. Telethon. My mom was bidding up, and my because one time oh, someone, you wanted to buy something because someone put up just this legit antique like awesome phone booth, and it wasn't that expensive. Oh wow, so we were trying to get it, and then another time someone was auctioning off you like shiv. a complete set of Dungeons and Dragons books. <laughs> Why do you have a shiv there? This is my Google Glass screwdriver. I used it uh, for a task. It uh, looks like a shiv. This is a this is ship for like a rat. Anyway, <laughs> the, maybe a uh, chinchilla could wield this. So you'd call them up and give them money, and they'd send you stuff, and you become a member, and then that money would keep the network going. And so it, this is it that still works. The network is still around. This is that. This is from 1992. This was on television, the Gallery 33 like art auction thing. The video is great one because if you've never seen this style of programming, it is gone. This is a, a legacy. This is like the maybe end of PBS the 80s, does still have it, but not like this. The cadence, the words people say, the way they talk, their diction, the way they're dressed, mm -hmm. their hair. This is amazing. When people think of the '90s, they're thinking of like the mid to late '90s. The early '90s were like a bad version of the '80s. Well, I think it's just, you know, you're thinking about young people 90s. You're not thinking about what the old people were doing in the 90s, right? People think about the 60s. They think well, about look at what this hippies... this young guy here. This young guy's dressed in an 80s, like, late 80s right, fashion. Right, but I'm just saying, like, people think about the 60s or the 50s. They always think about what young people are up to, right? You know, Elvis fans, Beatles fans, hippies, right? Disco kids, right? Yep. No one thinks of, defines a generation by what the old people were doing in that era. Like, you know... 80-year-old, 70-year-old people in the 70s, what were they into? Still jazz music, probably. Nah. Right? So I mean, anyway, not to get too down into this, watch this video because this is an art auction and this video is a super cut of one person who donated several pieces to this. Uh, I think they all got bids. Like People bid them up and bought them. And it's all furry erotica. Really? Uh, yeah. That one was, I think, called Surfacing. The funniest one at the end is called The Smell of Wet Fur. Right. And the best part about this video... Is they're just straight-faced. They don't think there's a problem with it? They are 100% straight-faced, but a few of them... Like, one guy starts to talk, and he's like, those rats, are, uh, they, they look like they're having a good time, and let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing to behold. All right. Someone's bidding on the free erotica? Uh, it all got sold. There you go. So thank you, Judith, the person who showed this to us. <laughs> so speaking of animals with fur, in Hong Kong, a place Rim recently went, he apparently did not witness this event, though, while he was there. Maybe that's a shame. That's a shame. Uh, somehow, a wild boar, I don't even know how a wild boar lives on an island like that, uh, got into the store via the ceiling. And here is a video of that incident. It's hilarious. The end. There's this great moment where he's on the... Uh, like on top of all these shelves, and he's got this look of the fuck are you all looking at? <laughs> like he's looking down at all these people, and the cops are all just kind of hanging out watching him. Like, what I'm we surprised do? they had someone who knew how to hog tie it and take it away properly. Well, I guess a hog tie is the correct way to deal with that situation, right? But someone who had the proper training knew what to do. You know, just because I know to hog tie it. I mean, did they go? Well, you know what? Did Actually, they go on YouTube and say how to hog tie a wild boar? You know who did that? You know who does that? At least in the U.S. Animal control. My mom. Oh, all right. That was my mom's job. She basically would work with like the police and the anti cruelty, and like when they go to bust up a dog fighting ring or like deal with a, an abandoned pet shop or something, she was the one who would come in because she knew how to deal with all the different animals. Mm -hmm. All right. So in the meta moment, the book club book your is Hong Kong's gonna call up your mom. Yeah, is still Watership Down. It's a story about rabbits on an adventure, fighting fascists and cultists, and just trying to make a new home. Mm -hmm. You read it yet? I uh, haven't read it in a few days. All right, all right, because I'm reading other novels now. <laughs> I've moved on to several other books since then. If I just keep going on not reading it for longer, it will be a more hilarious and ongoing joke that way. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that book. I don't know why you're not reading it. It takes, like, will... it takes like half a day to read I'm that I'm sure book. if I actually sat down and read it, it wouldn't take very long. Let's do it. 
two weeks. I'll just say this. On that Thursday episode, that'll be the end of it. We the gotta, longer we gotta this get, goes on, the longer the book I pick is going to be. We got to pick. We got to move on with the book club. It's not much of a book club if we just keep talking about it and don't do it. So yeah. I think it's been almost like a ridiculously long time, like perhaps even six months or so. Yep. So uh, two weeks from now, I'll, I'll finish it. And uh, kind of an aside, if you want to see us perform again at PAX Australia... Our third PAX Australia in a in a, in a row. Uh, email us or tweet or something and let us know. I want to know how many people for serious actually really want us to be at PAX Australia. Is it worth it for me to use my vacation and my monies to go to Australia again when I could just go to someplace with castles or a tropical island or et cetera? Because not I, that Australia isn't part tropical island. Because as much like it's it's tough because after like I went to the second one even without Scott. Because I've gone to two, and the second one's like like it was better than Pax South, like it's for real Pax now in a real venue. It's real hard to imagine myself not being at it every year. Like there's this momentum, but at the same time, even I can't afford to drop like six grand. Even a year. you, so so wealth, wow. Yeah, but it's it, like. That is not a trivial expense to fly yourself to Australia. I mean, a, for a fraction of the cost, I can go to Europe, right? Yeah, for the cost of going to PAX Australia and staying there for like the two weeks to make that flight worthwhile, I could spend like a month in Hong Kong. <laughs> so, what's the exchange rate in Hong Kong? Don't they have Hong Kong dollars? Yeah, it's like 12 Hong Kong dollars to one American dollar. Oh, all right. Or no, no, but are the uh, prices 12 times no, 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 higher? It, or, yeah, it's something like that. I don't know. I mean, I paid for everything in my credit card. I really care. <laughs> uh, so much money that you can't afford to go to Australia. But in well, Hong no, Kong, no, I my even care. company card. I was there on business. I didn't spend any of my money. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Believe me, I would have. You known... didn't buy any wild boar. <laughs> oh shit! Oh yes, yeah, so the craziest thing happened in Hong Kong. I forgot to tell you about this. So I lost my wild boar. Oh. And... <laughs> How did you get it into the through customs? <laughs> so, I guess we're doing this show about nuts. Because people, Scott didn't like the other crab people. People love food shows, and there are a lot of different nuts to talk about. Yeah. Might, as well, might as well start at the top. Pistachio. That's the top. That's the money nut. So the pistachio nut is the greatest nut that can possibly exist. Don't If anyone fucking calls rights or forums or anything to us talking about what is actually a nut and what is not a nut, you can go fuck yourself. Yeah, a we, we've been nut, down that road. A pistachio nut is called a pistachio nut colloquially, therefore it's a nut. If you try to tell me like a peanut's not a nut, or I don't even know what's a nut and what's not, but I know sometimes you someone is going to come out to us and be like, a cashew nut's not a nut. Scott, sometimes uh, you feel like a nut. a nut. Sometimes you don't. They're all nuts. If the word nut's in the name, it's a nut. Go fuck yourself. All right, so pistachio nut is the greatest nut, which is why. Oh, it is a nut. It isn't for real. This article is about the culinary nut mm -hmm. and the tree that bears it. All right, fine. The pistachio nut has a protective shell. The protective shell is the most important part of yes. the pistachio nut. That protective shell keeps you from dying. I. If you get already shelled pistachios, a human being cannot physically prevent themselves from just eating all of them in one and then they're dead. Uh, this happened to me. I didn't die. But the first time I Came went to Turkey, close. I went to like a bar. I was having a drink, and they brought out like a big tray with a bunch of nuts, like big bowls of nuts, just for the bar thing. So I'm sitting there, and I'm looking. And there's one nut I don't recognize. I'm like, what's that? And it was just it was a pista a bunch of pistachios outside of their shells because I just you don't see a bowl of shelled pistachios. Well, you do if you pay a zillion dollars for them. Yeah. But meanwhile, in other countries where they actually have these things growing. They're cheap and plentiful. In the, the United, next thing in the I United knew, States, they are expensive and rare. I had eaten every single one of them, and I had a stomach. If I go to the grocery that. store and they have pistachio nuts, it, they're charging like eight bucks for a tiny bag. Yep. They are expensive, and there is a reason. It's because they come from far away. That's why wow. they're expensive. So who do you think makes the most pistachios? Which like country? Countries. Yeah. I mean, it's not Turkey. Turkey is not number one. All right. It has to be in that same latitude, generally. You'd think that. Um, I don't know. Maybe the Iran. same. Iran. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Number two is the U.S. I mean, we're just big, right? Yeah. We number make, three we is make the most of a lot of things. Number three is Turkey, okay. then China, mm. Syria, Greece, Italy, Afghanistan, Australia, and Tunisia. Greece got a lot of pistachios for a tiny place. Yeah. They got like an island of pistachio or something. <laughs> Though what's interesting is you look at the yields and the United States has like three times the yields per hectare 
like a, a like an equivalent sized pistachio farm in the U.S. makes three times more pistachios than Iran does. Mm, we have better farm technologies. Harvesting. Ooh, I'm learning about droops. Uh oh. I guess they're droops and they're not nuts. Uh, see, this is the shit I was saying. We're not going to talk about. Fuck that. Hull them and dry. It's called a nut. It's a nut. Anyone who says otherwise, I'm going to get rim shiv and come after you. So I learned something very important because I like pistachios. Like we've, we've got this out of the way, but I also like Turkish delight. Turkish and delight has pistachios in it. Yes, and all those like pistachio candies. flavored ice creams, pistachio flavored anything. Yep. So the thing about the pistachio nut is that you get the saltiness of, say, the baseball park peanut, but you also get sort of like this oily, fatty tissue part, sort of like an avocado. It's almost like a peanut and an avocado got it on and then protected themselves in a shell because they're too delicious for the world. <laughs> so pistachio baklava was my favorite. That's pretty great. Until I went to Turkey where they have pistachios. You can just get pistachios. Were those were those pistachios better or different than the ones we had here? Way better. Aha. Uh-huh. The cheap ones were just amazing. Also, they just toast some of them like peanuts. Those get toasted salted ones. Yeah, see when you don't have a, a thing that's plentiful and it's too expensive, you often don't want to like, you know, variation on it too much, right? So if you only got so many of these, don't fuck them up by roasting them or some shit. Yep. Right? But when you've got tons of them, it's like, we got tons of apples, man. We got apple pie, apple cake, apple fritter, right? <laughs> it's a, we got apple everything because we got so many of the damn things. We got a hundred varieties and whatever. Thanks, Johnny Appleseed. You know, grapes. We got 10 billion wines, 10 billion grape varieties. But pistachios, all we got is pistachio nut in a bag. Yep. That's it. And we don't, th- we don't think about, like, ooh, does this come from the good trees with the thin shells or is the shitty trees I got, with the I got thick a macoon shells? pistachio. Oh, I got a honeycrisp pistachio. Yeah. It's like, we don't do that shit. All right. So I'm at this dinner, and I go to order some pistachio baklava, and my business partner is like, oh, no, 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 no. That's, that's a, that's a, what he did. That is a tourist move. He basically said the equivalent of, that's a noob's mistake. A noob's mistake. Yes. It's like, you are a baklava amateur. <laughs> Get the walnut baklava. I like I walnuts. Like, walnuts, and I was are, like, walnuts, walnuts are nut number two. There is no question. So I asked him, like, why? Why the walnut? Why does that make a better baklava? And lo did he tell me over about 15 minutes why walnut is a superior nut for baklava. And it comes down to that baklava is sweeter and lighter, and you can eat more of it before you feel sick. So the walnut, even though pistachio is the best nut, when I'm baking anything, and perhaps I've never baked a baklava, but I'm sure that would be all right, a walnut is always the go-to nut for baking anything. It goes in the chocolate chip cookie. A walnut is a nut. It goes in the banana bread. It goes in just a fucking salad. You just take a salad, crunch up some walnuts, and... No, I always my I put nuts in my salads. Like almost every salad I make, I put nuts in. A lot of times, like when I'll go buy salads for lunch, the salad is usually like some kind of lettuces... Apples, walnuts, some kind of cheese, some kind of dressing, maybe some other <laughs> junk thrown in there. A walnut is the nut of any tree of the genus Juglans, uh, Juglandaceae. <laughs> <laughs> Juglans, Juglans. <laughs> Particularly the Persian or English walnut, Juglans regia. Mm. It's King Juglan. Yeah. Oh, no, here's the funny part. See if you can, see if you can guess why I was giggling. Juggling, juggling? It is used for food after being processed while green for pickling walnuts or after full ripening. I've never for, had a pickled walnut. For its nut meat. Nut meat of the eastern black walnut is less commercially available, as are butternut nut meats. <laughs> <laughs> so the walnut actually comes in a shell, but rarely do you see it with the shell in the store, right? Unless you have a uh, horse, like, or not horse walnut, I'm thinking of, of chestnuts, but unless you have one of those, like, poisonous shit fake walnut trees. Yeah. So. The walnut usually comes, you know, out of its shell in a bag. But that's okay, because walnuts really, while being so great to be the number two nut, are not as delicious as pistachio if you're just eating them by the fistful. Yes, right? a raw pistachio, just dried without salt or anything on it, is so delicious. delicious. With salt, salt just makes it better. Yep. A walnut, salted or no, is not something you just want to eat. I mean, it's okay. It's not like... I, I prefer them unsalted. Sure, but I mean, it's not usually salted, right? But it's not something... Well, you, if, they're, if they're mixed in with other nuts. Even if you roast it, which really brings out the flavor of a walnut more than any other nut, you really... I mean, when I bake with a walnut, I will often toast them before putting them in for the baking. Yeah. I learned how to toast different kinds of nuts in the blue. Toasting apron. the walnut really brings out the flavor more than any other nut I've ever used. Which I've is been doing, part I've been of why it's so good for baking. But anyway, 
it's still, even toasted to perfection, eating a raw walnut isn't really amazing, right? It's all about putting it in the baked good so that it combines with the sugars and the butters and the flours and the chocolates or the whatever else is in there. And usually you buy them in a sack chopped up, and they are perhaps even more, if not as expensive, as the pistachio. Which is why when you go to like a frozen yogurt place where they're selling frozen yogurt for like 79 cents an ounce or 49 cents an ounce. And there's that bin of walnuts. And walnut is one of the available toppings. Just scoop walnuts into a cup with no yogurt. You are getting a mad deal on that shit, yo. Now, there's the there's the, there's the uh, mega form, the mega evolution of the walnut. The candied walnut. Yes. Often now, I will notice, I went to the frozen yogurt place to try to scoop some walnuts. They didn't have the walnut just sitting there on its own. I think they were on to me. They had the walnut suspended in sugary syrup. Perhaps it was maple-ish. Perhaps it was caramel-ish. Eh, whatever. That's no good. But it was... I'm very- talking about the candied walnut. It was a... That's a candied walnut. No, but the ones that are like separate individual walnuts... With a thin, crusty layer. Well, how do you think you make that? You take it out of the syrup and you leave it out. So they leave it just sitting there in the syrup. Eh. Well, I mean, you know, they don't want it to go bad. Just I guess there. I only ever encounter candied walnuts in, like, expensive dishes I've ordered at restaurants, like, ringed around a salad. Mm. Like uh, salt and fat and that one salad that we get every time we go there. Well, what, there was that place we went to that had, like, the one night of, uh, you know, what was it? Nor- what country was that? Oh, the Finnish thing? Yeah. They had some walnut action going oh, on. Oh, yeah, that was super good. Right. So Was it Finnish? Swedish? I already forgot. Emily's going to yell at us when she sorry, listens to this. Sorry, Northern European country. Your food was delicious. That Don't place be insulted, was super good. We can't remember you. Yeah. Anyway. Well, because it's gone, and also that was one of the more expensive dinners we've had in a long time. That wasn't that expensive. Yeah, I couldn't eat there regularly. Well, it was a one-night deal, so it yeah. would pop up. Anyway. Yeah. You're right. The, the candied walnut and salt and fat is... Uh, yeah. It's so good, right? But, but that's because it's paired very well with like this particular right. kind of salad. The thing is, like, the walnut is so powerful, but it only works in combos, and you got to do something with it. It's not like the pistachio where you can just eat it or combo it. The walnut is very relatively weak on its own, but super powerful when comboed. It's like a synergy nut. So when I was young, like when I was really young, I pretty much consider the cashew to be the king of all nuts. Cashews, because okay. I like cashews. I mean, I a like lot. I like a cashew, but it's not like it's up there with the pistachio and the walnut. Yeah, but they're they're the one they're one of the nuts that I can eat in bulk when I'm hungry and feel pretty good about it. Yeah, a thing that I so I would often go to the Dwayne Reed and they had this magic mix and the magic mix used to be called raisin nut mix before they changed the brand and basically what it is is peanuts, cashews, uh. M&M's and some other junk mixed together in a bag. So I realized that they were charging a lot of money for that. I could I realized that by weight, I could actually save money by making it myself. So I go to the grocery store, I would buy a thing of peanuts, a thing of cashews, a thing of sunflower seeds, a thing of, you know, M&M's or chocolate chips, right? And just sort of mix all that together in a bag and shake it up. Ah. And that is a delicious magic mix of nutness that you can get. You don't have to do the chocolate if you want either. You can put dried fruit in there, some raisin. Raisin is good in there. Uh, I've, you know, it was raisin nut mix originally, right? You can also put like a some dried, any kind of fruit you want. Apricot, pineapple, whatever, you know. <laughs> it's a really good nut usage where you can get, you know, the full power out of something like the peanut or the cashew by making a trailish mix out of it. So nut I'm not, not a fan of, actually. I think my least favorite nut is the Brazil nut. I don't that eat... Mother, that's the big motherfucker that's hanging out in the mixed nuts that kind of just tastes dry and bland and it's just in yeah, the way. I don't eat the Brazil nut very often, but I think I might agree with you, except for the fact that I specifically dislike the chestnut. What? I was The chestnut's one of my favorite nuts. So the chestnut, I mean, maybe it's because you're a goyim, right? But the Jews don't really eat the chestnut. Why not? It's not a. It's like a holiday Christmas goyim thing. Yeah, so it's a holiday. Yeah, but it's also just like a delicious thing. It's not. I mean, I tried it once, and it's sort of like I'll put it over there with the eggnog, right? That's shit. I Wait, don't how have to did eat. you try a chestnut? You know how they have them. Uh, they're all heated up, right? And they're in the shell. You open the shell, and you take the nut out and you eat it. See, the real secret is you get chestnut things, kind of like with walnuts and baking. Get like a chestnut pastry. I guess that could be okay. You should try. You know what? You know who has these? If you're ever downtown, but like go- when you're when you're in New York City, right? 
the, the hot dog vendors in no, the winter. No, no, fuck winter, those guys. Right? Fuck the street they nuts. Always, they always have the little... I never had eaten one of those. Well, most of those guys are selling like other weird nuts or they're selling like just almonds. Right, but I'm, ta- I'm not talking about the nuts truck. I'm talking about the guy who sells hot dogs, but in the winter, he brings out the chestnut tray where he's got a little circle thing with tinfoil with chestnuts in it near this fire, right? And he's heating them up. And they're, you know, it's like... I didn't have that from those guys, but I basically had that at like a friend's house who was roasting chestnuts, and I'm not into it really. Yeah, uh, you, know you run that? into them a lot in Turkey. Like every street corner, there's just chestnuts everywhere. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't really like them that much in that form. I actually like them in. If you go to Takahachi, that really good Japanese bakery downtown, kind of by City Hall, they have basically blueberry and chestnut pastries. Oh, that could be good. That have, like, cheese. They're so good. I eat one, like, at least once a week. One of the two. I'll eat that. Yeah. Crazy dangerously good. But, I mean, there's no way that that can approach anywhere near walnut, pistachio, or even peanut level. No, it's uh, it's better than peanut. Peanut's a different purpose, because peanut is the... Uh, the default nut, and it's the savory nut. Right. Well, in the United States, peanut is the default nut, and people like to look down on it the way, the same way that like someone who eats fancy hamburgers might look down on a McDonald's. Like which... they see the peanuts in the mixed nuts box as filler. Right. And it's like, you should look down on the McDonald's, right? But you should not look down on the peanut. The peanut is the default nut, but it is so, you know, popular that doesn't mean that it's bad. A peanut is super delicious. Peanut butter? <laughs> now, I prefer actually peanuts. I like... Going to the baseball game, buying a bag of peanuts, making a big mess, letting someone else sweep it up. I like wasabi peanuts. Honey roasted peanut? I'm not a big fan of honey roasted. See, peanut is so common, right, that you can start to get these variations on it that you can't do with the other nut. It's like, our, it's like you know, pistachio and turkey, peanut in the U.S., and it's... So good. If I lived in Turkey and I came to the U.S., I'd be like, oh, my God, peanuts. See, my, my favorite kind of peanut, bar none, is the simple oil-roasted peanut with a little bit of salt. Yeah. That is the best form of peanut in the world, in my opinion. That's because a good, that's dry, a good roasted, form. dry roasted has, gets kind of like dusty if you're eating a lot of them. Like, you can't eat a lot without feeling sick. Do you like, do you still eat the shells like a nut job? Well, so, so we're talking about now. I'm only talking about peanuts that are not in their shells. Oh, see, I was talking about the shell when I was talking about the baseball game. Yeah, well, the baseball game peanut is a different kind of peanut experience. <laughs> it's all the same nut, yo. Yeah, but those those are brined, and they're like it's not it's not like the salt or dry or roasted. Yeah, how, outside. how do they get the salt in there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. To this day, I, I've occasionally run into people who uh, exclaim something to that effect. When I'm eating, when like around us, they have a tiny syringe and they squirt uh, salt into every one. <laughs> There's a hole you just can't find it. They're artisanal. No, they're not, they actually bread them. They they that salt's natural. They put salt in the dirt. It doesn't kill the the, the, <laughs> yeah, the yeah, peanut. Totally fine. Yeah, but uh, I don't eat those kinds of peanuts that often. Uh, I eat peanut butter more than I eat peanuts, but I will eat peanut rather often. Uh, you know, usually in the bag of magic mix or something like that that I put together. Wow, there is a question on the straight dope, and someone is just like, "So I've seen this happen in movies. Do people actually eat the entire peanut, including the shell?" I do the not. The first post is my is mom dis- used that to. That is disgusting. I do it sometimes. The outside part is not food. That is like eating, uh, the I don't know, like the rind of an orange. Or the skin, uh, the peel on a banana. It's like you oh, don't. Oh, you know what I've never had. You don't eat that. Someone has suggested deep fry peanuts in the shells and then eat the whole thing. I guess that could be better, but it's you could just deep fry peanuts. Uh, do, could, do, 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 do. Ah, okay. I used to eat salted in the shell peanuts hole. I grew up eating that way. I discovered that if you eat too many of them, you experience a phenomenon that would be best described as anal splinters. <laughs> yes, don't do that. Usually what I do is I'd eat like every fifth or sixth one. I just eat the whole thing. Another when I'm at like a baseball game. Something else, though, about the peanut is that unlike other nuts, you know, I talked about the walnut needs like an upgrade. The peanut, you can't upgrade it too much besides peanut butter, right? There's Wasabi. Only... Sure. But you can downgrade it by making peanut brittle, which is disgusting old people candy. What's wrong with you? Peanut brittle's fine. As disgusting old people candy that you should not eat. I think you just hung up on the name and the fact that it features in a lot of media involving old ladies. No, I would eat it when it would come in Halloween. Some old lady would give it to you, and it was never good. 
I, I've tried to eat it so many times. Even going to places where it's like, you know, you go to like a, a tourist place and there'll be like a fudge and, you know, some butterscotch sticks and then there'll be some peanut brittle. And I would get like one of everything and the peanut brittle was like, why did I get that? I should have gotten just more fudge. No. Uh, yeah, I'm a fan of the peanut. The problem is peanuts, like any other, but more so than any other nut. If there's a bowl of peanuts and I'm near them pretty much, I'm going to eat them all. <laughs> Goodbye. <unless someone> stops <laughs> me. Goodbye. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I put the peanut is even above the cashew. If there's a bowl of cashews, I'm not just going to dig in like crazy. Well, I'll kind of alternate between the two. I mean, I will eat them, but I won't like... Go, like oh. If I was going to make my magic mix of like nuts to have out just for like casual consumption at a party, there'd be one bowl that was a mix of cashews and peanuts, one bowl that was just pistachios, and one bowl that was just toasted pistachios. I usually take my magic mix and I put it in a, I'll put it all in one big giant Ziploc bag, the big kind, and shake it up like crazy. And then I'll go biking or something, and I'll pour out a little bit from the big bag into a little bag and take that with me in a little uh, jersey pocket thing. Ah. And that's, that's how you do. I'm kind of done with pecans, other than in pie. Yeah, pecan is really like a pie-only kind of deal. I mean, I've never, I think maybe a few times I've eaten them not in a pie, and it was like like while I was making a pie maybe. I don't know. Yep. <laughs> or maybe while someone else is making a pie. And it's not something I really want to eat too much. It's not like... Ew, I don't want to eat this, like the chestnut area, but it's not like, you know, I mean, if if there was a bowl of them next to a bowl of cashews, I probably wouldn't even eat one pecan. Nah. But if there was a pie, I would cut off a nice slice. But I think the nut I'm the most sick of, of all things, is actually the almond. Like, I don't like uh. most most forms that almond are presented to me in as nuts. Well, they're not nuts, they're droops. Sure. The fruit of the almond is a droop. So the almond, I actually like the almond a lot, especially when it's put in the chocolate bar. Exactly. I like that form of almond. But I also like just an almond sack of almonds, all right? Sometimes I'll put the almonds in the magic mix. The thing is, I think the almond is a lot like the the cilantro. I think there are some people who just, they try to eat the almond and it's no good for them. See, it's not that, though. Like, I liked almonds. I used to eat them a lot, but I'm kind of sick of them. And they're usually like too dry, or they don't fit the other things I've got around. The like other thing kinda... is that almond prices are going up, and there's a lot of things people are doing with almonds, like almond milk, right? Uh, people don't know this. Well, some people know this. You can use almond extract instead of vanilla extract, and you probably won't even notice the difference. Well, no, it's actually sometimes it could be way better. Depends on what you're baking, like True. which one you want to choose. But they're both really expensive. Yeah. <laughs> but almond extract is like that's hot stuff to have for like if you want to step up your baking to like next level. Instead of just using vanilla for everything, figure out when to use the almond and when to use the vanilla uh, and when to use both. But I guess I only like almonds like with olives and in almost no other context as just a nut on its own. I could eat a sack of almonds. Eh, I wouldn't, though. Not More anymore. readily than cashews. I would eat a sack of cashews. In fact, I did eat a sack of cashews over the last two and a half days. Ugh. So I just bought a big sack of them. I set them on my desk because I'm stupid. Now they're gone. All right. <laughs> Hence my tweet earlier. The almonds are also good. You know, if you're going to make mixes with almonds, it's usually better with, you know, fruity mixes, right? You know, almonds and dates, almonds yep. and figs. But see, it's always, I like almond with something. I don't like almond by itself. By itself is good, with a ch- but it, you know, with a chocolate, with a fruit is better. And it's got to be toasted. I don't like raw almonds either. I like the ones when they have the little skin on them still. If the skin is gone, then it's um, oh, yeah. having a problem. I need that little skin there. Like I, the pist- I cooking, like the pistachio with little skin way better also. When I'm cooking, like blanched olives and things are sometimes useful. But Actually, I think with every kind of nut, I like the little skin that's on there. All right, we have talked about nuts... 55 minutes. Well, some of that was news time. Some of it was. All right. I think we can stop talking about nuts. See, I told you this is the right topic. Yeah, it was a good show. I'm feeling Send good. us your other nut varieties. Do not tell us what is and is not a nut. You yes. Can, you can shove it. That's a bannable offense. Yeah. <laughs> This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night.
The assigned value is $100. And I hold in my hand the last piece of art. <laughs> Item number 69. A watercolor titled Exchanging Fluids by Brian Swords of York. The dimensions are 24 inches wide by 19 inches high. <laughs> And this is really, we were saying, kind of a companion piece to the Brian Swords piece that we had up on the table previously. Uh, actually, this one should have come up first, and that should have been the later piece. <laughs> well, been on both, right? <laughs> and anyhow, it also is self-explanatory, certainly. Once again, our final piece for the 1992 Gallery 33 is item number 69, a watercolor titled Exchanging Fluids by Brian Swords of York. The dimensions are 20. a popular website that otherwise has ads and instead buy the site's ads and put no ads up except a tiny banner that says no ads because of us. Well, I think a better way to do it would be saying, this game on Steam is free today. I'm paying for every copy. Anyone who downloads this game today on Steam, it's free. Or Humble One Bundle. One day only. The yeah. fabulous anyone who Blues buys Brothers. A, anyone who gets really a Humble Bundle Review. today pays zero dollars. And it's you get the whole bundle, the max bundle, and yep. I will pay the max bundle price for every person that downloads. Not the worst idea. Yep. So you're promoting those games because they're getting exposure. People play them who wouldn't have. I'm getting exposure because my name's on it. People are getting free games. I'm, and the people who make the games are getting money, and I'm just spending money. But I'm getting the exposure that I was paying just for in the first place. Don't do it with City Bike because those people were in my way. <laughs> All day. It was awful. I didn't bike to work today only because I went to El Dentist. I've biked to work like 12 times this year so far. The dentist said I was looking great. No problems. My teeth are awesome. Not bad. I bite you. I don't really want you to bite me. But they're so clean right now. It's the best time for me. It's Thursday, May 14th, 2015. I'm Rim. I am Scott. And this is Geek Nights. The fuck are we talking about tonight? Let's do this. So, uh, biking home today, I was going to have a bunch of anecdotes about how, for whatever reason, today must have been, like, shithead biker day. Like, I bumped into more people on bicycles. Yesterday was Bike to Work Day, that Wednesday, that, and I think it's Bike to Work Month oh, also. Oh, because yesterday a whole bunch of shitheads had set up these tents, like, blocking the bike lane, giving away free shit. That's, and yeah, that's really got in my way. That's transportation alternatives doing their thing. Guys. They do that every year. You haven't noticed? You know what? You I know think what? they do it multiple times yeah, a year. Yeah, you know what I probably noticed it as? Some shitheads are blocking the bike They've lane. They've actually upgraded. Usually I just pass it by and ignore them. Uh, but they upgraded, and they instead of just having coffee that I don't drink, they had coffee and snacks. So I day passes. I'll just go get but, bikes and take them to other stations. Right, just to ride bikes around. But meanwhile, they're still getting paid probably pretty close. You know, I can't imagine they would make a deal with too much of a discount, right? You know, that company is, is paying for all these day passes. So they're not actually giving away for free. They're just increasing sales. Yep. It's interesting, though, because I had no idea that this was going on. All like, I knew was shitheads on city bikes who don't know how to ride bikes were wobbling around all over the place, yeah. going the wrong way in the middle of the street. I'm sure business people already knew this, but that like that's a great business idea I never heard of before, where it's like, let's say I sell apples in my fruit store, and yeah. it's like, you know, apples, 10 cents. I'm going to sell X apples. If it's free apples, but I'm getting the 10 cents from Rim, who said, I'll pay for everyone's apples today. I'm going to sell out of apples yeah, but me and make way more money. Me paying for all those apples is way cheaper than me buying like an ad. Well, because what you're doing is you're buying people liking Rim. And I'm, yeah. I'm the one profiting from that with my store. And, and everyone I else is profiting with the apples. It's pretty much like just good all around. We're onto something here today. Yeah, so we just need to uh, find... So here's the next thing. If you want to advertise on the internet... The way to do it is find me to bite you. No, but then you'll get him dirty right away. Are you filthy? I just biked here. You're gonna get a <laughs> bunch of New York all over your teeth. Yeah. So I, I in you, the news, me a brush. Uh, as I pointed out on Twitter, because we chose not to pay for upgraded infrastructure with money, we're now paying for our lack of upgrades with literal human lives. Because one of the biggest train disasters, like in recent history happened and an Amtrak train basically like crashed and killed a ton of people. 
Yep. I think they found the eighth dead person so far. They're not sure how many people are dead. How is it so hard to find people? Aren't they just all in Did the train? Did you see pictures of the train? Yeah, but aren't they just near next to the train or under it or in no? It? They're like crushed inside of that. Like, how are you gonna? They gotta cut this thing apart and get inside it. Look at that. Yeah, that took this many days. Yeah. All right. Shit's not easy. Okay. So, basically, this should be a wake-up call, but the reality is, already, one, it's a partisan issue, and two, <laughs> almost no one actually cares. The Republicans, funnily enough, they had basically, like, along with the Democrats, sort of passed this thing a while ago that said, Amtrak has to put in this fancy... Actually, oh. slowed down for a second to peep the snack... And then saw it was a crappy snack and kept going. But they had, like, the, the crowds they formed were blocking multiple bike lanes that I used to go to work. So, guys, think this through a little bit better. But also, today, I run into, it, like, I've never seen so many adults who clearly do not know how bicycles work attempting to ride them in New York. And they're almost all on city bikes. Mm-hmm. So uh, Scott just informed me right before we did the show that apparently today was like you can ride city bike for free day. It was actually very interesting. The reason you could ride city bike for free today was because some Swiss company or whatever sponsored it. Like they basically said, we'll pick up the tab for everyone getting a free city bike as a means of advertising themselves. And I think that's actually cool as a revenue stream for a city bike. Yeah. Uh, but, act, you know, it's like... If it's like the Empire State Building where every day is sponsored by... Well, I guess sort of, but think about it this way, right? Let's say on a today they would have had a hundred people buy day passes, right? Okay, that costs X dollars. That's how much revenue they bring in. If day passes are free because this company is paying for them, a lot more people are going to get 